Number 12. Steam to drive an old-fashioned steam locomotive is supplied by a constant gauge pressure of 1.75 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter square to a piston with a 0.2 meter radius. Letter A. By calculating P delta V, find the work done by the steam when the piston moves 0.8 meters. Note this is the network output. Okay. So essentially we're using this formula over here on the right hand side. And it says the work output is essentially going to be the network output, I could say, right, is equal to then the gauge pressure multiplied then by the change in volume. So now what is a piston? Well, we need to know a piston, a piston, excuse me, is uh, essentially a cylinder. And they told us the radius of the cylinder, right? What did they say it was? It was, uh, or it is, uh, 0.8 meters, right? So 0.8 uh, meters. All right. And you know that the volume of a cylinder here, right, volume of a cylinder is going to be equal to pi r squared h. Okay, so let's just now start plugging in maybe some values into this equation, all right? Uh, so the network here, so the network is going to be equal to the gauge pressure multiplied by the change in volume, right? And you know change is always final minus initial, okay? So volume final minus volume initial. All right, let's then plug in now our formula here, okay? So this is P, the gauge pressure multiplied by now the final volume. Well, the final volume, right, of this, so if you pretend, if we pretend here, so the piston works by doing this, right? The piston compresses, okay, as it pushes down, right? The piston compresses the air inside, but the pressure remains the same. It's just the volume that will change, okay, in this problem. So, and, and, and essentially in a, in a motor. Um, so what we realize now is the final volume, so let's say let's say this is the initial state. So I'm going to make a little line right here. This is the initial, okay? And at the final state now, actually, my apologies, my apologies. The initial state, because we're talking about work being done, my apologies. The initial state should be down here, okay? This would be the initial state, let's say, down here, okay? This is I. Then what will happen in, essentially in terms of, I mean, steam engine is slightly different and all this stuff, but just... Just consider this, some type of reaction happens in here that causes then the pressure in here to basically build up, but the pressure is going to assume to remain constant. So instead that pressure is going to be translated into then an increase in volume, all right? So if that's the initial state, and then whatever happens inside of this cylinder, okay, causes then the volume to go up, it's gonna push this thing on up, like that. So let's now assume that this is the final state, okay? And therefore, we know that this height difference, right, represents the change in height. Is that, does that kind of make sense? So in other words, instead of actually, now that I'm thinking about it, instead of, um, instead of breaking this up, instead of breaking delta V up, what I actually should do is this, because it'll just make it a little easier. I can do it that way, but it's just more work. I'm going to say that the volume here is going to be pi, right, since it's a cylinder, it's R squared times the height. but the volume changes, right, just by just by what I did over here. But the volume changed as a function of what? Did the radius of this thing change? No. The height changed, right? So basically all I need to do now in my formula here is just plug in a little delta H. Just plug in delta H there, okay? So this is then the change in height. Does that kind of make sense? All right. So now, actually, I can start plugging in, and what I'll do here is I'll erase this. Now I can start plugging in the values. All right, so the network, actually, you know what? I'll expand on then the final. I'll, I'll expand on the change in height, so I apologize. So this is the uh, gauge pressure multiplied then by pi r squared. Now, anytime you have a change, like I was mentioning before, it's always the final height minus the initial height. So the sign is relative to how you define the initial and final point. So now that being the case, consider this. The gauge pressure they told us was 1.75 times 10 to the sixth pi multiplied by the radius of this thing they told us it's point no 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 it's not point eight it's point two my apology i know you're probably screaming at me before i'm sorry about that so this is point two uh meters all right and then the height they told us the change in height uh was going to be 0.8 okay meters um all right so that's great so now where do we got? Okay, so we got the signs here. So there's going to be point, uh, 0.2 squared, right? And then multiplied now by the change in height, okay? 
So now, if what's the height change? Well, it's simply 0.8, right? That's what they told us. So all we now need to basically do is just plug that on in, okay? The final height is higher than the initial height. So that means it should be a positive value, okay? So let's just calculate. So we have 1.75 times 10 to the sixth times n pi, multiply by 0.2 squared, multiply them by 0.8. So we get about, so the network being done by, you know, by this uh, engine here is going to now be, uh, what do we get? 1.76, 1.76 times 10 raised to the three, four, five, five. And that is in terms of joules. All right, so there you go. That takes care of that. And then well, that's letter A. And then letter B, it says, now find the amount of work done by calculating the force exerted times the distance traveled. Okay, is it the same as in part A? So now if we consider, remember work could also be defined as force times distance, okay? So we know the distance, right? That's just the 0.8, okay? But how do we find then the, how do we find then the force? How do you think we can go about doing that? What do you think? Well, we know the area, right? Don't we know the area of this piston? So we know the area, okay? It, it's simply pi r squared, because we know the radius. And then if you're thinking about, well, how is force and area connected? Oh, isn't that connected through pressure, right? Pressure is equal to force over area. Oh, right, so that means force is equal to pressure Pressure multiplied by area, right? Oh, so wait a minute. Can I take this then and substitute that in for F here? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. So this is the work is now equal to the pressure multiplied by the area, then multiplied by D, right? And guess what? I'm not even going to plug in the numbers here. This is the same formula. Here, take a look. It's the work is equal to the pressure multiplied by the area. What's the formula for the area? We said before it's pi r squared. Times then, what's the distance in this problem? Well, the distance is simply change in height, right? And oh, wait a second. Is that the same thing as this? Or I should say the same thing as this? Yes, it is. So they should be exactly the same. All right, guys. So hopefully that helps. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Take care.